Good morning, everyone. Welcome again. We're here again, continue with the series, The Lazarus Blueprint, Ancient Secrets for Healing and Inner Peace. And we look for healing and um, peace in all situations. And Bermuda has a hurricane called Paulette coming towards us on Monday morning. And many of you know Reverend Paulette. It was the first time I've known of a hurricane that has a name of someone I know who's very dear to me. And her wholeness, the whole of her is about stillness and calmness and peace. So we're going to change Hurricane Paulette into peaceful Paulette. And that's what's coming. It's going to come along and do what it has to do because it's already out there in the ocean. And it's going to calmly move away from our island. And I command that. And I know that God is in charge and will take care of us no matter what happens. I trust and I have faith in God that all is well. So peaceful, Paulette. We send love your way and ask that you move on out further into the ocean. So we say thank you for that. So with that energy of thankfulness and gratitude, let's go into prayer. As we take a deep breath in and silence our minds, we know that God is in charge all the time and we give thanks for the gifts and the power of God in our lives. As we breathe in, we trust in his guidance and we have faith that we are directed in the right way in the right place at all times for we are each children of God blessed in the spirit so we open ourselves to receive that inner peace and that healing of mind body and soul and continue to listen for God's guidance that comes in that soft voice that we have to stop in these times of prayer to listen for. And so we give thanks and gratitude and appreciation for all the wonderful and good things in our lives. And as God blesses us and directs us through this pandemic, through these hurricanes, through these elections, through all the things that are going on in our world right now. As a young boy who was killed on our roads and one who fell overboard, we bless their families and heal them as they move through these painful times. We bless those who have gone through and still cleaning up after hurricanes in United States and in Oregon and everywhere in those areas where wildfires are taking place in parts of California. And it seems to be the whole world is burning up and pandemics and all these things. And that seems to be, that is the focus of our news. So right now we step away from it and send healing energy out to all of these areas. Where situations and circumstances are taking place that are painful. And we infuse them with love and healing. Like we bless the doctors and the nurses who are taking care of all those who are coming to the hospital for any illness, whether it be pandemic, for through the fires, through the hurricanes, through accidents or anything we bless them as they help us all all those who need healing we bless those in the hospitals those who are home those who need a prayer we bless you and we hold you in the light of god right now we bless our friends and our families and all those people who have touched our lives who we walk past in the street whether we know their name or not we bless you and we hold you in the light of God. We bless our earth and all that is here in this earth as we heal the violence and the anger and the hatred and shift our minds and our hearts, all of us collectively, 
to a place of love, of peace, of joy. For we, as children of God, have that power. So we claim it and we name it right now in the power and the love and the grace of God. We say thank you, God, for the fullness of gratitude and appreciation. For it is done right now in the name and in the power. We say amen. Amen. So as we lead into my talk today on um, command. So my title it says command now. And it's about a strong command about words. And this song speaks on that. And, and it's by Eddie Watkins. and says, I say yes or I'm saying yes to life. This is commanding. I'm saying yes to life. So listen to this and enjoy it. Well, I'm saying yes, yes, yes. So, are you saying yes to life? There's a wonderful life. The world is wonderful. We're saying yes to life. As we continue with this series from the Lazarus Blueprint, Ancient Secrets of for Healing and Inner Peace. As we know, we've been if you've been following through, we're using John 11, 1 to 25, the story of Lazarus. Great story to use. I'm not going to read the verse. Get out and read it at some point, And we're going to use the verse this week and says he cried with a loud voice Lazarus come out that's this week's one 
Well, I'll give you a short synopsis of the past weeks for those who haven't been with me before. But if you want to hear it all, go back and listen to the past weeks. We're on step five. So go back to one, two, three, four. This ancient secret that it talks about, about we as Unity call ourselves metaphysicians. So we look at stories in the Bible and bring them in today's world and see how they affect us and what is it in it that we can get from it for our lives and what do they, the situation represent for us. There are two main characters in this story, Jesus and Lazarus, of course. Um, Lazarus represents the part of you that needs to be restored or needs time to overcome and heal from something. And Jesus represents your highest nature, the real you, the one that understands and goes beyond things to get to where he needs to be in life. These steps each can translate to elements in your life. So I tell ask you to take these steps from this story and use them for any situation in your life. I'm using it broadly for the pandemic and I'm going to add a bit of the hurricane pullet, as they call it, or I'm going to call it calmness pullet that is out in the ocean right there now. Um, and I use that as my example mostly through it, but you choose what you need to come overcome of what's going on in your life beyond that. But first, each time before you start any practice, you have to use that first basic tool, which is to meditate, because that helps you to find time to sit with whatever is going through and find out what's bothering you to get to this place where you know you can get um, sort out what needs to be overcome. Okay, so don't forget the first basic tool. Now, the first step is called turn away and this is taken from the um the lazarus story where jesus takes a few days before he goes to see lazarus even though the sisters had called him he took two days before he went there he took these days to turn away from thoughts of impossibilities to possibilities, to make space in his mind and his soul to face this situation with his friend um, and to get all the negative energy away from it because when the sisters called, you could feel the energy in it. He wants to go there clearly and and knew what to do and find out what he needed to do within himself and to trust himself to do what needed to be done. So once he had done that, he done the turn away, he went to step two. And we'll use a part in this story where Jesus tells them to remove the stone. And you know, everybody's looking at him like, mate, it stinks in there. He's been dead for a couple of days. You didn't come early and and why do you want us to move this stone? And of course, all the crowds are around and they're like, you're too late, mate. But he doesn't stop or get involved in all of that. He doesn't play the blame game or anything like that. He is focused on what needs to be done. He said to take away the stone. And for us, it's like getting rid of roadblocks and anything that needs to be overcome in our lives because we have to do that to journey into a clear road and to get out of the darkness of a cave experience of where we are, like the pandemic feels like we're in the darkness because we're at home more than normally in Bermuda, we'll be free. Once this come Paulette comes in, we'll be at home again because it's shutting the island down almost for two days. We have to find a way out of that. And we will when we always do, when we take command of our mind, our body and our soul, and then we take action. And that's what they did. So they moved away the stone that was keeping Lazarus in and he trusted God. He knew God and he had faith that whatever was taking place, he can handle it. And he told him to move away that stone. The next step we did in the next week was great expectations. Where Jesus said in this verse, did I not tell you that if you would, you would believe you would see the glory of God. 
See the glory of God. What are your expectations in life? What are your expectations during this pandemic? What are our expectations in Bermuda through this hurricane? We have to have expectations and expectations that are positive to get us to move forward, to get us be, to move beyond our five senses of feeling and hearing and, and seeing things and watching the news and all of those things that kind of block our vision to get us to go for, blocks our faith to see beyond what is going um on in our lives. After we move that stone, we have to know where we're going from there. And we have to have faith. And faith is enough. But if your faith has blockages in it, that's that's only, only as far as you're going to go. So you have to completely move the pebbles, the rocks, the boulders, all of it out of the way so that you have a clear path. And it takes time. To find the expectation, to find the path that you want. Be patient, trust, and keep on keeping on. Know that you can do it. And then last week, we talked about upfront things, or I called it giving things, where Jesus looked upward and he said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. Now, for as humans, we're like, we say thank you after something's done. But here he said, thank you first. And this is what we do in our prayers. And I always like to say, thank you, God, even before I start a prayer, because then I have guidance and I cl I've cleared a path to open my way to share what needs to be shared because I give him my thanks up front. And I know that God will guide me forward each step of the way. So giving thanks in advance in that story was Jesus affirming truly his sincere gratitude for what he is doing right now and what will happen next. He knew it was going to come out right. So he gave all those things. He, he had the feelings and the emotion and the, all of those things that he needed to do what he needed to do because he knew God was with him every step of the way. For humans, because we struggle with that and we falter sometimes when we say, oh, I have faith in it. And then we go, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. One of the things we say is fake it till you make it. And it might sound corny and, and oh, really? But sometimes we have to keep saying, I am well, I'm well. Like in this pandemic, I'm getting through it. We can get through it. We can get through it. We can get through it. And we will. Things are changing. People are getting better. They're finding different ways. They're working on vaccine, vaccines for us to get through. Through this hurricane, I know we'll get through. We've gotten through many. For I don't have to worry about that. I've already given thanks that we're going to get through this one. Um, but this simple gesture that Jesus said when he looked away and he gave it thanks is something that we can do all the time as we go through situations in our life. And I'm giving thanks right here, right now, to be able to speak with you and share these words and these, um, given my great expectations, because with those and perpetual grateful heart, we're able to keep the channels open for goodness and great things to continue to happen in our lives. So always remain sincere and steadfast in your commitment to emerge from a cave-like situation into a trusting situation where your expectations for good will manifest in your life. So now we come to step five. And step five is a strong command and I call it command now because this is taken from the verse where he says he cried with a loud voice Lazarus come out hmm and Lazarus came out didn't he he walked out with the cloth hanging on him and he came out there are key words here that reveal the secret to what you can accomplish when you use commanding words. 
We have to cry out loud. We have to say it loudly and strongly. Not timidly like, come out here, Lazarus. No. Powerful words. Those words will mobilize things to happen. And that's what happened. In the Lazarus story, the volume and the power of Jesus' voice ignited the energy that pulled forth Lazarus from that cave. Jesus again, well not again because he always was filled with absolute faith. Yes, there were little stories in the Bible here, but he was always filled with absolute faith that he can accomplish all things. And we as children of God can accomplish all things. We can get through all things. And this is one tool, that another tool that we can use is our voices, the strength and the power of our words. And to use them simultaneously with the spirit of life that is within us. And with that, we cannot fail. So I'm asking you, are you been looking at the news saying, oh my God, this thing, this pandemic is just getting worse. When is it ever going to get it better? Or look at this hurricane. Oh my God. Well, in Bermuda, they bought out the stores again. I, I, I don't know why. I'm not going to judge. But they're going out and bought out the stores again. But that's their way of working through this. But we're going to claim right now, hurricane, move away. And I'm going to trust in God, whatever happens, the perfect and right outcome will take place. And when we use our words boldly in a strong voice, it implies a feeling of assurance. Because when you're not sure of something, you need to speak it strongly to get it in your body, in your mind, so that it sounds right and feels right. Sometimes you have to say it silently in your mind, like, I can do it, I can do it. Like I told you, the, the um, story, the children's story of the train, I can do it, I can do it. Sometimes we have to whisper to ourselves until we say it louder and louder and louder. And then it comes forth and it's hurled forth in words audaciously, like Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. We have the same power in our words. We, as children of God, have that power to command what we desire in our lives and have faith that it will come forth. And with this commanding, the other part of this is to feel it. You can't just say the words out loud without any emotions, without feeling it. When you say it out loud, you feel things in your body and there's a vibration in your body when you shout, now I'm, I'm loud, everybody knows I'm loud. I can feel my voice through my body, especially if I really shout loud. This is what you need when you need to change a situation in your life. You need to shout it out loud. They use the story in here of a guy who went through, um, his son was on drugs and, and killed himself. And he was healing from this and he, he had to work and he was living in New York and working in New York. Sometimes the, the sad feelings would come over so deeply and he really wanted to shout. So he needed to use this step was very important to him. So he found what he used to do is wait till he had to get on a train in New York. And you know, when that train comes down, it's loud. Nobody can hear anything. He shouted out his affirmation, his healing affirmation. And he, every time the train came and he had to catch it, he did it. And then he found himself laughing after And you know, in New York, nobody won pays attention to you. And even when he is laughing, nobody paid attention to him. So that was one of the ways he found it. And we each can find a way to find the words to express, to get through what's going on. And, and hurricanes can be a lot of energy around. And I remember one hurricane I was had, I was living by myself and, and I was sitting there, I said, stop. And I yelled it out because it was blowing for so long. And soon after, and it helped me to relax myself. So this is the, something we can do. And words also can be soothing words. Right now we're talking about commanding, but they can be soothing. Soothing words can heal what we do in meditation. Soothing words and they can heal your body as well. Also angry words, what do they do? They want to make you 
fight and flight and all sorts of chemicals that go in through you and you want to you're angry and then what happens the other people get angry so words have power so always watch what you, words you are speaking how what you are saturating with your energy because they can create or destroy and always know that your words affect you your own words affect you the most as I said before, what words are you saying during this pandemic, through these fires, through these, all these things that are going on? What are the words that you're saying? Your subconscious is hearing these words and feeding on these words. It doesn't even have a sense of humor. It doesn't know the difference between what you're constantly saying and what you actually believe. So you have to speak the truthful words. The commanding words that are uplifting, uplifting and powerful to you. Because words are mirrors. Remember that. Words are mirrors. And I always say thoughts are prayers. So what are you thinking? Are they really prayers? So watch what you're saying. And for many people who are out of jobs or in struggling right now, are you saying, oh my God, I don't have enough money, I'm not doing this? Yes, that is a reality. But let's change the word and watch how that changes you and then opens the pathways for good things to happen. And a lot of times it's not right now. It could take a little while, but keep at it. They shared a, a wonderful little story in this chapter about a Buddhist. And it's just another example about um, what are you seeing and what are you believing in and what are you commanding as words in your life. And it was a Buddhist and he had his students and they're walking through the forest. And one of the students up in the front saw a decomposed deer there. And he tried to get his teacher to go another path. And the teacher says, no, this is the path we are taking. And, and and once he saw the deer lying there, and it, it was bad looking from the way they described it. And the teacher says, my, what beautiful antlers. And isn't it interesting? What is what the average person would say? Oh my God, look, yuck. Let's go another way. But no, he said, my, what beautiful antlers. He didn't focus on the decomposed deer. He focused on the beauty of his antlers that was still there. So for we, in this pandemic, through these hurricanes, through these fires, through all of these things that are going on, we have to look beyond the obvious and find the beauty in all of it. Find the love. Find the joy. Find the beauty. And as in this Lazarus story, Make sure you're Pacific. We say, make sure you're Pacific a lot of times, but you also have to be open to God and say, this or something greater, God. Jesus also used Lazarus' name. He didn't just say, man, come out. Or, hey, come out of there. He used his name. That is directing your energy. So when you want something to change, direct it and say the words of where you want it to be for this pandemic. Pandemic or COVID, go away. And keep at it and keep the faith because it is going to go away. But within our consciousness, it can move away from us and we can find ourselves in a more peaceful situation. So when you say that, you'll find yourself speaking truthful words, focusing your energies in the directions they need to be directed in and allow the good to come forth to you like Lazarus walked out of the tomb. Now remember, this story, this Lazarus story is not something that you have to say you believe in, but it's just something to understand and utilize the lessons that you can find in it, like we say as a metaphysician. So employ, use these steps that we've used so far in the last step, it's next week. Use them to shift and overcome things that are going on in your life. It's, it's, the story is stands independent from your opinions and your beliefs about the Lazarus story. It's just for you to grow more spiritually, more peacefully, 
and to heal your mind, body, and your soul. Create affirmations that you can use to command the situation to shift in your consciousness first and let it manifest out. Call forth what is you want to call forth. Write it down so that you have it. A lot of times when I'm stuck on something, I'm bothered by it. I'll write an affirmation down and I'll put it on my as my first thing I see on my um, screen in the morning. I have one that says, give thanks now. And that's the first thing I see. And that's my commanding words. So find something that gets you to keep moving forward. And then set a silent time daily to just be, to get in touch with your inner awareness and to listen for the still small voice of God to, to help you to adjust and improve your life and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So with these thoughts, we're going to go into our meditation. And I found a daily word that I'm going to use for the meditations from September 19, 1955. And it's entitled Command. And so, and the affirmation for this, as I wrote on uh, the ad, was Today I take command of my life and affairs. Today I take command of my life and affairs. So take a deep breath in and out. As we listen to these words, I am no longer the victim of conditions or circumstances. I declare my freedom from fear, worry, and indecision. Nothing can shake my faith in the overcoming power of Christ, the Spirit of God within me. Calmly and confidently, I move through this day's activities knowing that the unconquerable spirit of God within makes me the master of every situation. Today, I take command of my life and affairs. I determine my goals in life, the ob objectivities I want to reach, and then I joyfully set out to achieve them. I discipline my thinking. I resolutely turn away from all negative beliefs. I direct my thoughts and my energies into positive channels only. Through Christ, I am the master of my thinking and action. I am the master of my life. The Spirit of God gives me the wisdom to solve every problem, the power to accomplish every task, the love to erase every inharmony. In this assurance, I take command of my life and affairs. And from 2 Timothy 1.7, for God gave us not the spirit of fearfulness, but the power and love and discipline. We had a blessing to that daily word. So let's take a deep breath in again and awaken to a new day, renewed and transformed. For we have commanded a good life, a healthy life, a prosperous life. A strong life. So we affirm right now. I come out now. I leave the dark cave of the past. And I step into the light. I come out now. I leave the dark cave of the past. I step into the light. So thank you everyone. I bless you. I appreciate you and I behold the Christ in you. So let 
the power of God protect you in all the situations taking place in this world. And as he watches over you, you are richly blessed. Amen. Namaste. Until next time.